All right, so for our next Lagrange multiplier example, we're going to go with a classic word problem. You'll all remember this sort of one from, from Calc 1, right? Box with no lid. We want to find the maximum volume given the surface area, given the amount of material that's available. Um, so let's think, how do, we, how do we set this thing up? Well, probably start by drawing a box, right? Here's our, our lovely box. Our box has three dimensions, length, width, and height. We know that the volume of our box is x, y, z. We have a total area available to us of what's it going to be? Well, there's the base, x, y. Um, there are two sides, the front and the back, that have area x times z, 2xz, two sides with area yz, 2yz. And we want that to equal uh, 24. 24, okay? All right, so there's your setup. Now you'll notice this time, unlike in Calc 1, I didn't specify a square base, right? We always did the square base, right? Because otherwise, I mean, that's three variables, that's one constraint. How are you gonna, how are you gonna solve, right? Um, well, let's see, how are we gonna do it? Um, you could, by the way, okay, so let's, let's pretend we wanted to specify the square base. We're not gonna, we're gonna solve without that restriction, because we can do that now. We know how to do multivariable calculus. If I wanted to put that restriction in, right, if I wanted a second constraint, the second constraint would be that, that x equals y, right? And so I could put that in as like maybe an x minus y equals zero as a constraint. Um, but that's a pretty silly, you know, I could do that. I could have one, one function with three variables, two constraints, but it's kind of silly. You want to just put x equals y in here, right? Eliminate that variable right away because that's pretty straightforward to do, yeah? Um, but I can't really, you know, what am I going to do here? You know, I can't really get rid of all the variables. Th this is going to be a situation where it's much more straightforward to apply our method of Lagrange multipliers, right? So, so this function here, this is my x, f of x, y, z. This part here, right, the left-hand side of my constraint equation, That's my g of x, y, z. Let's see what happens when we, when we run this through the Lagrange multiplier machine. We'll see what it comes out to. Okay, so we have the gradient of f. And we want that to be a scalar multiple. The gradient of g. Okay, so what's the gradient of f? The x derivative is yz, the y derivative is xz, the z derivative is xy. Okay. What's the x derivative for g? y plus 2z. Okay. The y derivative, x plus 2z. What's the z derivative? 2x plus 2y. Okay. So this seems like a bit of a mess, right? We get, we get three equations out of this. We get, we get yz is lambda times y plus 2z. Then we get xz is lambda times x plus 2z. Then we have xy is lambda times 2x plus 2y, right? And, and here's where you really end up wishing that this was linear algebra, because if it was linear algebra, we'd know how to solve. We'd have a method for solving these, but what do we do here, right? We have nonlinear equations. We got to come up with something clever to solve these things. Um, well, one, one clever thing that you might try is noticing that 
for each of these equations, if I multiply by the appropriate things, I can get the same left-hand sides for all three equations. If I take the first equation and I multiply by x, I know that x, y, z, which is our volume, by the way, um, is going to look like lambda times um, x, y plus 2x, z. Okay. I also know that x, y, z is going to be lambda times, and I'm multiplying both sides by y, x, y plus 2, y, z. Uh, here, if I multiply by z, x, y, z is going to be equal to lambda times 2, x, z plus 2, Y, Z. Let's see if that, uh, if that gets us anywhere. Well, it kind of does because we have these three equations now. One, two, three. And the left-hand side is the same for all three. That must mean that the right-hand sides are also the same. Yeah? So we can start equating left-hand sides to right-hand sides and uh, see if it gets us anywhere. Um, which two should we start with? Maybe we'll start by comparing, let's see, one, one and two. So what happens when I set one equal to two? Well, then I get that lambda times xy plus 2xz is lambda times xy plus 2yz, right? Okay, now what? Well, let's see. Lambda is common to both sides. Can I cancel it? I can cancel it as long as, as lambda is not zero. Do I know lambda is not zero? Let's see. Well, what do I know if lambda is zero? Um, well, if, if lambda is zero, my volume is zero, right? Um, that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it, and you know, then zero volume is certainly not the maximum. Um, also, if lambda is zero, then y, z, x, z, and x, y, those are all zero. Um, and that would mean that my area is zero, but my area is not zero. My area is 24, okay? Um, so I know that lambda is not zero, okay? Okay. Lambda is not allowed to be zero. Okay. So what can I do next? Oh. X, Y is now on both, the lambda is gone, right? So I just have X, Y plus 2, X, Z equals X, Y plus 2, Y, Z. Um, subtract X, Y from both sides. And what does that leave me with? That leaves me with 2, X, Z equals 2, Y, Z. Okay. Well, certainly I can cancel the 2s. X times Z equals Y times Z. Where do we go from there? Um, is that, does that mean that x equals y? I think it does mean that x equals y because the only other possibility is that z is 0. And if z is equal to 0, I don't have much of a box, right? If z is 0, I've got, I've got a sheet of cardboard. I don't have a box. My volume is 0. I'm trying to maximize the volume, right? So. Z can't be zero if I want a max. And, oh, hey, look what happens. I didn't tell you there was going to be a square base, but guess what? There's a square base. Ha. Ah, X equals Y. So the base is square. All right. So where does that get me now? X equals Y. Well, now it means that 1 and 2, right, these are now the same equations. So now I should kind of throw one of them away because they're the same. And let's compare, let's say, 2 equals 3, right? Let's see what happens if I set 2 equals 3. And, of course, I also have now that x equals y. So let's just set y to x and see what we get. Uh, so from equation 2, um, we have lambda times x squared plus 2xz, okay, and that's going to equal lambda times 2xz 
plus two more xz. Right, because I just said x equal to y. Right. So let's see. Let's expand everything out. Let's see what we've got. We've got um, lambda x squared plus, well, 2 lambda xz, 2, 2 lambda xz. I can, I can cancel those, but there's still one left. So, so I actually have this. I have that lambda x squared equals um, 2 lambda xz. Okay. All right. Um, once again, I know that lambda is not zero, so I can cancel that from both sides. Uh, x, well, again, x is not zero because otherwise I don't have much volume. So what am I left with? I'm left with x equals 2z. Okay? And remember that uh, x is also equal to y. Now I've got the relationship among my three variables. x equals y equals 2 times z. I can come back to here. I can put things in. Let's see what that gets me. Um, OK, so let's put x and y both equal to 2z. Let's solve for z. So um, I get 2z times 2z, 4z squared, um, 2z times 2z. 4z squared, 2z times 2z, 4z squared is 24, that's 12, 12z squared is 24, so z squared is 2. z is a length, so I throw away the, the negative root, z is root 2, and that means that x must be 2 root 2, y is equal to x, so y is equal to 2 root 2. And what's my volume? My volume is going to be 2 root 2 times 2 root 2 times root 2, which is going to be, let's see, uh, 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, times one more root 2, 8 root 2. And I guess I was working in imperial units for some reason, so 8 root 2 cubic feet gives me the answer.